episode of Outside the Rack is brought to you by Kinetic Performance, the makers of the Gym Aware. In today's world of strength and conditioning, data collections become the utmost of importance, and that's exactly where Gym Aware separates itself from the competition. Because when we're sitting there and looking to collect data, what data are you actually collecting? And are the numbers you're looking at fitting into the exercises that you're utilizing? And even more so, are they going to answer the questions that you're looking for? Looking at different ways that you are moving the barbell through peak and mean, both velocity and power, is really what separates gym aware from the competition. Being able to understand what your ballistic exercises are doing separate to what your strength exercises are doing really allows you to program at a much more specific level for your athletes. So hop on over to kinetic.com.au to see what Evan and his team have in store for you today. The world of strength and conditioning is filled with some fantastic practitioners that are always searching for more. But more what? What are strength and conditioning coaches searching for to better their ability to prepare their athletes? Well, what about cutting edge information or a place where you can find different opinions from forward thinking coaches on what you're doing, how you're doing, and try to get feedback to be better for your athletes? Or what about a place where you'll find like-minded coaches that can provide solid coaching advice and career development for you as you progress through your career as a strength and conditioning professional? Well, this is exactly why we built the Strength Coach Network. You'll have access to exclusive monthly content on top of the sensationally active forum that we have where you can communicate with coaches all over the world to find those answers that you're looking for to help you be a better practitioner for your athletes. So make sure you hop on over to strengthcoachnetwork.com slash CVASPS, that's strengthcoachnetwork.com slash CVASPS, and get your 48-hour trial for only a dollar. I look forward to seeing you in the Strength Coach Network. What's up, everybody, and welcome to the 24th episode of Outside the Rack, brought to you by Kinetic Performance, the makers of Gym Aware. In this show, we're just going to try to dive a little deeper into the minds of some of the top practitioners in the world of sport performance to learn a little bit more about who they actually are and where they got to where they are today. Today, we are joined by the High Performance Director for the Chicago Red Stars, Megan Young. Megan, thanks for being with us. What's up, Jay? Thanks for having me. Yo, always great to see you. So happy to see that you're doing well and things are great up in Chicago. But before we get going too fast here, who is Megan Young? Um, You know... When you like sent me this preset list of questions, I was like, God, none of these are light. None of these are like easy. Like, oh, Megan Young is uh, 34, 35 uh, and been in the world of performance for 20 years, whatever, since she was 14 and then started coaching um, about 15 years ago and done it at a couple colleges and now in the pros, but who is she as a person? Megan Young is one thing as a person and that's a connector. Um, whether it's people to each other, that's probably my favorite one. Um, people to themselves being my second favorite and then people to information. So whether that's getting systems to talk better to each other or systems to make output reports to get to people, whatever that is. But at the end of the day, I love filling the gap. I dig that. Megan Young is a connector. That's awesome. Yeah. That is awesome. Well, through your time going from the great state of Alabama <laughs> up to the Windy City, I'm sure that there have been plenty of things that have been aha moments. For sure. But if you wouldn't mind, could mm -hmm. you describe for us a learning situation that brought about an epiphany in your career? Yeah. Um... I think there's a few that we can talk about. Um, I think there's also like, when you talk about a career, you're talking about a person's life. You're not just talking about their career. They're tied together in, in our field. A lot of people's identity is so wrapped up in their job. And we were talking a little bit before we started about when people's identities wrapped up in wins and losses and then validation via athletes instead of self-validation or even self-awareness of who they are. Um, so my epiphanies have definitely been like different growth points of who am I along the way. And, um, when I started this, you know, I was in football and basketball and soccer was a team that I had and a sport that I was learning, but 
was like, all right, I'm a former thrower. I identify as this. I need to look more like this to fit into this basketball world and gel into that situation. And then I was like, wait, now I'm more in the soccer world. And God, I never want to run as much as they run, but I need to present a certain way or at least be able to speak a certain way to relate to them. And then all that comes to this epiphany point of saying, outward presentation isn't nearly as important as communication. Everyone thinks you need to look a certain way and present that way to be able to coach a certain population. Whereas as long as you know how to effectively communicate and reach people and connect with them, that epiphany of connection will take you what took me through every route and relationship because at the end of the day, it's like if I can communicate in a relationship and make a point with that person, that's going to matter more than if I can do a 46 inch box jump um, or run their tempo runs with them. And so, um, it's definitely been a challenge too. And I've been through certain things in my life where, you know, you come back and strength is your identity. And I'm like, man, I love being strong. And that gets taken from you. And you're like, Oh God, I'm not in control of that. And when your physical body, you're not in control of, and even mentally, some of those things that you're not in control of, you really get down to that core of who you are. And that's epiphany. Number two is really understanding who I was as a person. And, um, being able to know that in and out and have it regardless of club I'm working for, country I represent, uh, college I work for, those are all external things. Internally, my house had to be clean and it has to feel a certain way for me outwardly to do what I need to do. And um, I, I think part of that is also just getting older. The blessings of this is 30 and plus uh, is part of that. And you're figuring it out along the way, but we're so busy in our profession that it's like, oh, I'm a plyo guy or I'm an Olympic guy. And I'm like, well, I asked you who you were, not how you lifted, you know, um, or I didn't ask you what your philosophy was. I asked you about you and you went into why triphasic is God's gift or whatever. And I'm like, wait, come back. Like, what do you do in your spare time or what's important to you in your life? What are your morals? Like those things. And so that that epiphany of Again, it ties into relationships, but knowing who you are. So I gave you two for one. I love it. And then spoiler alert, that wins and loss conversation was about me. Um, (laughs) (laughs) But no, and I think that that's great. And I think that really understanding, because another thing, you know, you're talking about getting pigeonholed and people getting kind of dialed in with, what exercises they use or what forms of those exercises they use. But even more so that happens with sports and seeing that transgression going from, you know, football and basketball to the world of soccer is one that that evolution Mm -hmm. is one that I'm sure really was a challenging at the beginning but be an, an exceptional learning experience to bring you to those other two points. hundred percent. I mean, fitness period, different across all three of those sports, right. And demand of the sport. And you can go read, um, what is it? Fergus Conley's book about that and just see the different demands that they come across at each sport. And it is vastly different. And so understanding those needs of that as athletes. And then I think mentally, one thing we don't talk about is different sports present mentally a little differently. Like you can have, people that have similar personality traits, but different sports require different capacities mentally and physically. We talk about the physical side. The mental side is also a big part. Once the whistle blows in a soccer game, there's very few things adjustment wise that get made that it's not player based and then having to solve the game for themselves. Whereas basketball coaches call to play unless they trust their point guard to call that play up and down the floor. Football plays going in from the OC and then in, from the DC for the linebacker, like that's just different. The control of the game is different. So um, I work in one of the most pure sports in that the players on the field are making so many decisions so fast and reacting to those. And then their technical, tactical awareness has to be at such a high level. It's it's a beautiful game to watch. Hence the name, right? <laughs> yeah, true. So listen, let me let me get you to number two because this is one that's going to be fun because you are a person that's constantly learning. 
that loves to keep moving forward. So if Megan Young could ask one question, what would that question be and why? Um, you know, so I like to think that I have a little altruism to me and um, I don't know, I like to study all these odd things. So I, my one question right now and would probably have to relate to particle physics and because we're so close. I talk about being a connector and um, there is a subatomic mass particle called neutrinos and they're just now starting to identify them and they, they think they're 13 or 30. I can't remember. And um, they believe that at any point in time, there's about 7 trillion passing through and they take on the energy state. They're neutral by nature. Uh, nature. That's why they're called neutrinos. But they take on whatever state they kind of pass through, whether it's an object or a human or a dog or whatever. And the way they identify them is by flavor. I just think that's amazing. Um, but the reason I care about this is they're saying that this might actually be the thing that when we talk about auras and we talk about energy and we talk about uh, empathetic resonance, like what are these connectors that allow us to look at some people and be like, ah, and some people and be like, oh, I need to know them. Um, once that's identified and we can actually say like, what is that state that you're giving off from this subatomic par particle that then passes through me? I want to know what am I, what energy do I give off? And the reason I want to know that is the more, you know, yourself, the more you can understand others. So um, I want to fast forward 30 years in physics and understand what that is. Dude, that's rad. <laughs> and um, it turns out my next door neighbor is actually a particle physicist working in a lab. Shut the... up. Come on. No. We were walking our golden retrievers one day and then I'm having a conversation. Can't oh, you can't make that up. That's awesome. Can't that up. So forgive me if I butchered the science behind it. Um, uh, I think the neuroscientists like Dr. Huberman, those guys would be like, oh, that's way off or whatever. But that that's kind of where I'm at on those things. That's just another reason why Chicago is just so awesome for you. Yeah, for sure. That's so great. Oh, that makes me so happy. Well, listen, Megan, let me, let me get you out of here on this because you do do a lot. And you've done a lot in your you know 20 years of being in sport to help a lot of people get better. Mm -hmm. So with that, Megan Young needs to have some time to get back to neutral. Mm. So what is your escape? Yeah, I think that um, for me, I love building systems. And so for me, it's like, what's my system? And there's definitely like daily things I do. Um, people make fun of me. I have my little corner. Some people call it like a Buddha corner, but I have my corner and that's where I start my day. And whether that's reading a book that I'm doing with some friends or spending some quiet time or doing things that people consider weird, like dry brushing and rock mats and visual work and vestibular work, whatever that is. But that is my space that I can use on the daily. And I like to sit in a morning and night. And then for me, like broader unplugging, um, the water is my connected space. So um, going out to Hawaii actually in like two weeks. And I've done that every year for the past three years. So um, getting away from everything and actually taking time to unplug with the person I love that's how I reset. So um, that's the bigger one. But I think that reset, if you need to reset and you're seeking that more than once a month, then you need to change your environment. That's a, that's an awesome answer. If you need to reset more than once a month, you need to change your environment. Mm -hmm. That's big time too. Mm -hmm. Megan, I can't thank you enough for your time today. As always, it's great to chop it up and I couldn't be happier to see how happy you are right now and how much you're just killing it up there. This is fires me up. It picks me up and I, I couldn't be more excited for you. dude. This is great. Appreciate it, Jay. And just remember that people like you and I and all the other coaches out there, like we have a charge on ourselves to do it for the ones that can't. So um, that's why I'll keep doing it and why I'll keep driving forward because you never know how much you're given. No doubt. Well, I appreciate you, Megan, as always. And we'll be in touch real soon. All right. Thank you. Yeah, man. Cheers.